You go ahead, Dave. I was about to say ladies first. Oh, well, that's why I said go ahead, Dave. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, then I'll introduce Bridget as one of my personal heroes. Somebody I'm lucky enough to consider a friend and family now and work with as well. Hell of a person. Just to put that out there. I have to uh, for those of you who do know who I am, Dave Steenberg, I was one of the road oh. captains, uh, part of the original crew of the convoy to Ottawa in January. Again, a uh, special credit to that wonderful lady, Bridget, who was one of the ones who involved me in the first place. A uh, little sum up a little bit about me. Everybody knows I'm a truck driver, mechanic, and short little guy with a a little bit of a weird sense of humor. I'm really not sure how much you want us to put into this, Kelly and Lamont. One sec, I'm just sharing us out right now, guys. Sorry. Okay. Paste and post. Okay, so now people will start coming on. It's just that we was shared to uh, one of my pages. It just got shared to the profile right now. So everybody can start sharing it out from here. Perfect. So now people will start logging on properly. It's just that we share it to my Kelly and Wolf page, right? And uh, we're going a little bit viral on everything else. So here we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Yep, yeah. go ahead. There you go, Kelly. I was just going to say, Dave, where did you, where were you starting off again? So short little guy who did what again? Uh, short little guy who did what? <laughs> a whole lot that nobody really knows about because honestly, guys like you, uh, you do amazing stuff, both you and Bridget, and, uh, you know, you're all legends in the field for what you've been able to do in Ottawa for the convoy. So just, um, I'm going to say just enough of that so you guys can introduce yourselves. You're the stars here. Uh, Kelly, sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. You wanted to say something? Um, yeah, I just want to, first, let's introduce what we're doing. So the purpose of this event is number one, we still have over 20 political prisoners being held in Canada since the first convoy. Now, October 22nd, we've got an entire week of an inquiry happening in Ottawa into the fact that our government committed domestic terrorism by calling the Emergency Measures Act, okay? This is an act of treason because it's an act of domestic terrorism and a violation of Section 83 of the Criminal Code. So we're asking all of our trucks across the country to reassemble, but this time to come into the economic center of the country. If you really wanna show this government uh, who the authority and the power is, you should do it where it counts. I mean, all that really happens in Ottawa is a bunch of people sit around a table and honestly bitch about how they're gonna steal our money. The government doesn't have any money. It's our money that they're that they are charged to manage. So we're asking everybody to come to the economic center where it counts. And, uh, and we're not asking everybody to occupy for a long amount of time. We know the burden that uh, everyone's taken upon their shoulders with the last convoy and how long it was. We're just asking for everyone to come in for a couple of days and uh, and assemble. We've got some serious speakers coming in, doctors from across the country, nurses from across the country, some very special guests of whom I, I'm not obliged to say the names of just yet. But um, but when they're re but uh, when I have the confirmation, I'm sure they're going to be to the punch when it comes to announcing who who is going to be uh, joining us at this 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 event. It's going to be pretty historical. Um, but we also want to use this event to launch an actual solution. So I mean, we've got groups across Canada that have been working and fighting for individuals. You know, over the last couple of years, we've done it through the line. We've done it through hugs over masks, through just say no, through we're all essential and all these other groups across the entire country. But, you know, helping individuals is one thing. What are we doing to solve the actual problem? And the truth is, the problem is we have one of the best structural institutions, you know, institutional structures in the entire world. But the problem is it's been infested, infested with uh, foreign and domestic bad actors that seek only to profit and expand themselves. And, you know, and that removes our rights as individuals, as sovereign people over our lives. And this is why you have corporations that are intruding into your life, into your bedroom, into your children's lives, you know, and so what are we going to do to solve this? Well, the CDDA working in partnership with the line and many other organizations across this country um, there's no political solution. 
And, uh, you know, we've said it since the beginning, since we began at Queens Park in Lamont. I'm sure he can clue in on this as well. We, this is, there's a reason why we never allowed politicians to speak at our events. Okay. Because there is no political solution to this problem. It's going to take us as a people to express our authority, to express our sovereignty. And we're going to do that by putting forth an amended version of the constitution that every single one of you Canadians love and adore so much. The amendments that uh, we're looking to push forth are the removal of political parties, number one. The reason for this is because this is the only way that all of these corporations have the ability to intrude upon our lives as individuals. So what they do is they sponsor these political parties in exchange for political favors that affect policy in order for their own growth and self-expansion as corporations. And the government does not serve us. They serve their own corporate head, which is the Privy Council, and these other corporations of whom they work with in order to profit and expand themselves. You know, each one of these political parties have their own constitution of which they serve. They don't serve the constitution that's supposed to represent the people. This is a serious problem. And this is why your vote doesn't count. The second amendment is we're going to remove electoral voting process because it's a fancy way to say you che- we're cheating. Your popular vote is supposed to count. The majority of people in this country, when they vote, should have the say of what happens in this country. And if that was the case, Andrew Scheer would have beat Justin Trudeau in the, when, he, when he was up against him. And this is a fact. So because there was, I think it was 200,000 more votes than Trudeau. You know, I quote, like, don't don't quote me on that one, but it was definitely more. And we all know that, you know, and it's, it's time for us to make change. And if we're going to do this, we need to come together and show the pressure. And we need to ensure that we get this message out to every single Canadian out there. Think about what we can do. We already know we've got the entire world watching. And thank goodness to you guys, Bridget, Dave, and every other trucker out there. The inspiration that came from your actions has really ignited the entire world to stand up for individual liberties and without these individual liberties we're all for for better lack of a term up shit's creek with no paddle and that's the truth because if we don't have the ability to be who we are as individuals without infringing on another's life liberty security property or labor you know then 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 where where are we going to stand We have nothing to adapt to, nothing to create, and no evolution could possibly take place. And without without these things, we will eventually become extinct as a species. So, and it's time for people to learn, you know, the psychological basis of how a civilized society is constructed. (coughs) And we need to come together. Our our First Nations people across Canada right now, I'm so proud of the Huron. They've, They've revoked their status entirely, and they are looking to lay, to reclaim their ownership over our resources and take away the ability of these crown corporations to sell our resources out from underneath our feet. This is happening right now. You know, the warrior Mohawk chief, Seth Laforte, Kanan Hadio, bless him. If you guys haven't watched uh, what's going on on Real Deal Media, you know, uh, it looks like the Mohawks are going to be following suit and revoking their status as well. And it's time for every single Canadian to do the same. You know, you can log on. We've launched um, the enforcement of the Bill of Rights in partnership with the Line Canada on a website called Unified North. Uh, We've already hit over 300,000 signatures, and that's just on our own backs alone. It's time to pull in the strength of all of the rest of the organizations in this country to force our sovereign authority over policy, (laughs) over the way our parliament operates. You know, anybody want to clue in? Guys? (laughs) <laughs> I, I mean I'm, I'm a, go for it. I've, I've always been from the trucker aspect um since day one being in the industry i've always um tried to be the best at what i did and um tried to learn as much as i could so for my aspect i i'm going to be looking out after the truckers rights um at this point our mandates are suspended they're not um they're not completely gone they could come back at any time and we've heard trudeau say that uh should 80 to 90 percent not be vaccinated this year uh against COVID, that 
he could very well put in all these mandates and restrictions again. So I'm, I'm going to stay in my lane, I guess, as you can say. I'm going to fight for the truckers. And there's so much more in our industry to fight for now uh, with uh, Trudeau at the helm. We've got this carbon tax that are eating up our uh, eating up our profits. We've got um, the fact that these mandates could come back. We've got uh, big companies ruling what we yeah, do yeah. and Just brokers the, stealing even more money from us. Cutting so it's, it's, from there's a lot up. there, and that's what I'm going to be working and with. That's the lane I'll be in. Um, I'll up. have a more Edited, clear and decisive and message as we go forward. My YouTube channel. Thanks, Kelly, for, for involving me. Be able to share Thanks so out. much, Bridget, for being here. So um, for some of you out there that don't know, Bridget huh? really is the meat and bones of the first convoy. Talks you know, with and uh, Dave, you can clue in on this as well. Yeah, Bridget is... I wouldn't use the word the meat and bones, but yeah, she. I'm gonna be she's the start of it all. If it wasn't for that wonderful, wonderful woman over there, there it may never well have happened. It wouldn't have. Two point oh. And to back up what she said. Second, man. Yeah, the mandates they are suspended right now. They what could come back at any given time, Again, and the effects to the industry. I'm also a truck driver, 28 years on the road experience, owner operator. And now I'm a partner up, or a partial owner of a company the, and an administration more than I am on the road. Farmers. And the changes that have happened to our industry just in the past couple of years All are almost people, impossible to keep up with. For uh, not only just for the knowledge, but financially, especially lawyers, for a smaller company. Uh, and they're scientists, slowly changing the rules nurses. to destroy us. Well, and here's what we need to do, Dave, is we need to get those company drivers to understand that just because they work for that big company, they are not safe. To kill we saw mandates, Celadon go down. We saw Falcon go costs, down. We saw all these no companies boosters, go down. No and what do they do to that company driver? They leave them in the truck stop and, and, and say, have a nice day. We want to make a change. There were only 200 companies in North America from the start of COVID mass. till now that no longer exist. The whole government's right? corrupt. It's insane. Yeah. We need to so protect ways, every driver, every company. Uh, benefits need to be a key. If I really it, get we into we it, kill our bodies our doing our job, and a lot it, of us have zero benefits crazy, or very bad benefits. So much, One of hard. the main benefits that a lot of carriers hours, don't man. have is eye eyeglasses, but prescriptions. Like, um, <clears> we need to see to do our job. Suddenly, so that, that's a must. We need to get all this stuff together and start taking care of our industry. Because... We Globally. are the backbone of Canada, Since the vaccine. and uh, like it or not, we're going to carry the freight and uh, those robotic trucks. They need to have their own lane. You want to put a robotic truck on, this, on the road in Ontario, anywhere in Canada, build your own roadway for that, because I don't want my grandbabies, and I don't want to be on the road when that truck has a short, because we know how the lifespan of electronics is in a truck. It's very short. Because of the bouncing and the highways and the weather. I don't want that thing anywhere near my grandbabies while I'm on the road. So if they want to put those autonomous trucks on the road, they need to build their own lanes. Get them off the public streets. Available in BC and And that's another thing that we have, you know, like for all the truckers out there, we got to fight for each other's jobs, guys. You know, every single job is essential in this country. Because every single, every job provides a roof over our head and food in the stomach for people, you know, and, and they want to replace, they, they like they are trying to take all these things away so that you have no choice but to become dependent on the rules that they put forth. So nobody is going, I, I cannot, and you know, I've been in this movement since the beginning. I've been in civil rights for 23 years. I refuse to die and leave my kids behind in a world that they don't have a fighting chance and every opportunity available for them. And if you look what's happening around the world right now, look at Iran. Look what is happening in Iran. Right now, women are being shot down in the streets. Students and every man that is standing up for them. This is happening. And they shut down the internet so that nobody out there can have access to this. Like, you know, bless Elon Musk for doing what he did for Iran so that they can continue to show the rest of the world what is actually happening. I have a personal friend of mine with her two daughters that are in hiding right now in Iran. And, and they're hiding because her her husband is part of Ayatollah's regime. So there's no protection for these people. 
And how did it all begin? It began with this psycho, the psychological indoctrination to society. And they did it in a way that, you know, poo poos on people for, for their own personal characters in order to justify tyrannical actions towards them. And, and I'm sorry, but you, whatever your opinion is right now of Jeremy McKenzie, okay, that's, that's, you know, I agree what he said was absolutely disgusting and derogatory, but it wasn't a direct threat. And he did it intentionally after speaking both with his, his, his wonderful hubby and, uh, and his best friend, you know, what he did, he did hundred percent intentional knowing that he was going to be arrested because he wanted to show everybody out there who's jumping on the Pierre Poliev band, you know, uh, that this man does not stand up for the things he's professing to stand for. And he proved it. What's the first thing Pierre did? He asserted to put a man in jail for the things that he said. And, you know, honestly, how many of us in the freedom movement have had hurty words thrown at us? I guess those are your words, Kelly. So thank you. (laughs) But hurty words thrown at us because somebody didn't like something we said, something we did. That would mean if we followed Pierre's lead, I would call up and say, I don't like Kelly today. She told me that she didn't like my dress. And she needs to go to jail. Um, You know, Dave said I wasn't working hard enough today. He needs to go to jail. Hurdy words, right? Um, I mean, we've had more than that for sure. I'm just being facetious at this point. But, I mean, you you know, we've all had the, you should be stabbed in the back. Oh, my gosh, shut up. You know, you need to be hauled off to jail. Whatever those words were. And that's within our freedom movement, which, you know, I'm really surprised. Freedom means... Everybody has the right to say what they have to say. And if you have a problem with it, go talk to that person. Find out why they're saying it instead of going on social media and tearing them up. That, that's just disgusting what we've done, but it's not RCMP worthy. That's right. That's and exactly that's right. exactly the situation that Jeremy is in. And anyone that has denounced him for what, what he did, I'm sorry, but he did what he did to prove a point. And you're not supporting them. If we're truly in this for freedom, regardless of what people say, we still need to have their back. Go and talk to them. Find out why. A lot of people will find out different things once you go and have a conversation one-on-one with somebody. Well, not just that with Jeremy. Uh, the next morning, he came out immediately with a substack that not mm-hmm. only owned everything he did, but apologized in depthly for, 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 for what he said. And, uh, you know... He did this knowing, and I know something about this. And, you know, Lamont knows something about this. How many times have we put ourselves intentionally in harm's way to protect other people, you know, and taken the heat? We've done this over the last three years. You know, I mean, I, and I'm not, I'm not saying this for accolades by any means, but I have been arrested more than anybody in this country, in every single province in this country. And I would do it a thousand times again, you know, and we all would. We'd fall a million times more on a million more swords if it meant your freedom. Because you matter, our kids matter, our elderly matter, all people matter. And it's time for us to take a stand, and one that is done in the most peaceful way we possibly can. We've got civil war about to break out south of the border, guys. And this this is what this globalist agenda needs. It needs radicals. It needs to justify its actions. Yeah, absolutely. And and what we are asking, so if you guys aren't aware, the, the symbol for the line is a circle with a red slash through it. And that that is, it's a symbol of the people over the politics. So right. um, you know, we're hoping that everybody out there, take it upon yourself, make that symbol, stick it on your trucks, put it on your vehicles, put it on your shirts um, to show that this is a movement that is about people, not politics. And, uh, and, and it's time for people to take a stand you know, internationally, you know, we've done very, you know, the line has done very well. I've worked with them since day one. And uh, there's a lot of people out there. Like, I know there's somebody in the chat right now that's yapping, but there's a lot of people out there that uh, like to poo-poo on people within the freedom movement. Listen, it's very simple. If you want to know who opposition is, it's anybody who is going to assert, to oppose anybody who has shown actions consistently toward the goal that is going to serve and benefit the collective of us all. So um, I th- I'm pretty sure that my own actions across this country speak for themselves. So I- unless you want to contest with me on those things, which I'm, I'm willing to do, 
you know, in a very diplomatic way with anybody. Um, so, and, and and that means you too, Jane Scarf, you have been invited to uh, to not only occupy a seat in the National Assembly that we're building, of which we have now uh, put together the collective of the entire, of the most effective organizations across this country. Every one of the most effective organizations of this country is working together in a National Assembly that is being built on a private server right now in order to guard our rights in every aspect. That includes our doctors, our nurses, and every founder of every single organization and group in every town, nook, cranny, city, and province, and territory in this country, including our First Nations. So whoever doesn't want to be a part of that uh, should be the people that are questioned because we are moving together as a united collective for our rights in this country and we are going to install the solution and uh, it's just that simple i am not afraid of arrest i'm not afraid of this government we do come with international protections we have partnered with the international <laughs> criminal court now there is a very clear difference between the international criminal court and the and the corrupt international court of justice of which belongs to the united nations okay and for anybody to try and make an argument that the united nations participated in the establishment of the icc especially when they are asserting to uh, promote the, the canadian bill of rights which was directly derived from the united nations um i think it's pretty it's laughable at best so um and and that would be the end of that but let's focus on what matters and what matters is october 22nd convoy 2.0 is coming to the economic center of this country and we are going to make a powerful move for sovereign change in this country and we want every single one of you to be a part of it and i can't wait to see you all sorry to interrupt no, no one thing that was left out uh away from the trucking part uh a lot of the information on the 22nd people come down there are going to be a lot of speakers, as was mentioned earlier. I've had the honor and the pleasure to meet several of them, have lengthy, lengthy discussions with them from Ottawa right up until now. And these are the people, I won't use the word experts, but people in the medical field, the doctors, nurses, uh, that have personally put their lifelong careers, because many of these people are in late 50s, early 60s, 70s, and it's been their whole life. And they have stood up against this to educate people and tell people what is really happening behind the scenes, what they have gone through personally. But they, they've had their licenses revoked or are in the process of being doing so, which one gentleman I spent several hours with the other night, November 4th is the last day he's legally allowed to practice medicine, uh, write prescriptions. One thing he said to me that really made sense. They use fear tactics. They dictate what I can and can't do, what I have to do, or they're going to pull my license. I stood and I spoke anyways. And he's been across this country. He's been all over the place. He said, yeah. one point he made, November 4th, I no longer legally allowed to practice medicine. I'm not a doctor. That means I can speak more. I can educate people more. I can tell people more because they have nothing to hold over me any longer. And these are the people, some of these people will be there on the 22nd. And they are going to tell you because they no longer have anything or corporation, government, however you want to look at it, to hold over their heads to shut them up anymore. And they are not going to. We need people to be educated, to be told the truth of what is really happening and how to self-educate again. And the information is going to be part of this on the 22nd to help everybody so that they can do this. And that is a very important thing that everybody needs to know. We need this to learn what's over. really happening. We need the truth. And Even it's going to be there to help everybody and the information for people to be able to get on and do this stuff is going to be a part of this as well. Mm -hmm. It has to be. Because you know what? Everybody's sitting there right now saying, oh, you know, these mandates are done. They're not forcing this. The border is being released. So, you know, we know this is all smoke screen tactics. Well, they're, you know, getting ready for another level. I give them another month and a half to two months before they start locking us down again. Trust me, we haven't put away our no more lockdowns lawn signs, okay? And uh, because they're sitting there, we might put a sticker on there that says again, you know, like when is enough is, is enough. So, you know, these doctors, for example, that are losing their jobs and their livelihoods, for example, we have to stay on top. 
you know, people are saying to us, uh, because we started the first rally in Toronto before we brought the first people into the streets of Toronto during our first march with my skateboard and my flag, they're saying to us now, well, these rallies don't, don't matter anymore. They don't care. You know, they've done very well at destroying us uh, and the freedom movement because of all the dissociation, division, and, you know, especially with what happened in Ottawa. And I'm saying this, like, yeah, the typical rally isn't really, this is not a weekly thing. It doesn't have to happen weekly, but we can't keep, you know, just turning a blind eye to this not happening again. We can't let these people think that we're finished. We need to still be there for the people that are waking up. I mean, let's look at the vaccine status. You know how many people now are starting to wake up? The vax people are starting to get pissed off. They're going to be the ones we have to worry about. Us being violent in the streets and being all loud and everything. Are you kidding me right now? We've just gotten these people warmed up. Now they're really pissed. Now they're the ones that are going to be lining up wanting to talk about this right now. So we're not going to let go of that. We're still going to be there to support people who want to do these shows and take these kind of interviews off to the ground and do them right and organize ourselves properly with the solutions that we need for the next level. Absolutely, guys. We've also, you guys, we, we've we just released, I mean, it's, it's starting to go viral now across all of the social media channels. They absolutely have signed a contract with the WEF for the implementation of digital currency. <coughs> they, they want to remove your property. Like for instance, like our treasurer for the CDDA is Miss Rena Malka. And Rena is the president of the Ontario Mortgage Alliance. This woman has 40 years, decades of transparency with millions of dollars. She will be the one handling, by the way, the donations for, for this round. And we want everyone to know that as the donations come in, they're going to be immediately allocated into the hands of truckers before they even head to Toronto. There's going to be no, no, there's going to be no room for where did the money go? So, um, you know, and, and when it comes to, you know, like m- myself and Lamont, we're very adamant about this and we will hang out anyone to dry that tries to interfere with that period. OK, um, the, so the truckers will have this money in their hands immediately before they even come. Whatever funds are raised thereafter are going to go in to the most effective organizations and their initiatives because we're building infrastructure. And with the CDDA, with the internationally recognized civil you know, independent civil society titles that we have, we can protect any organization that participates and holds a seat within the CDDA, within the National Assembly. We can protect your building of infrastructure from any intrusion of the government. We just got the Canadian frontline nurses an entire hospital in Sault Ste. Marie. Ezra Clinics is coming on. We're going to be we're going to be using money that comes in to finance their expansion and their opening of clinics outside of the jurisdiction and control of this government. We do not require a nanny. We are the builders, the makers, the maintainers, and the defenders of our own lives. And it's time for everybody to have the nerve. So, you know, you can be sure that we've got your back on this and this is going to happen. Educators. uh, Yep. Kelly, look at Raven out there in uh, Newfoundland. See the wonderful work that she's done. I love her. They've got houses. Um, getting cleaned up. They've got uh, freezers getting stocked with food. They've they've got truckers going and delivering stuff. What a powerful organization to look at. And I've had the pleasure of working with Raven. She is an amazing, amazing person. Most people know her as Dana, but she's Raven uh, via convoy. And uh, she's done amazing work. And do you know how much money she got from the government? Zero. Zero. We don't need the government funding us. That's the government fund doesn't ourselves. fund us. We fund the government. People That's need right. to realize that anything government funded is funded by us, funded by you, funded by your taxes, by the money that you sign your name and give them permission to steal from you. That's Nothing right. is government funded. It is funded by the people. Just like Dana. this thing right now, donate to the Red Cross. The federal government will match it dollar for dollar. They're matching it with your dollar. They're not matching anything. You're donating one dollar, and they're taking one dollar from all of us for every dollar that you make. So we're matching the funds, not the government. We fund them. They don't fund us. That's exactly right, and that's why we've said it from day one. Like what all these tort, you know, civil cases where people are suing the government, you're suing yourself. You're suing yourself. This is why we've pushed since the beginning for criminal accountability. And I'm sorry, but you are not going to get criminal accountability here in Canada. 
it will not happen. And this comes down, you know, I'll do another video on this later on. I don't want to hold up everybody's time. Let's stay focused on the fact that this is uh, event based, right? But um, I will go live later and explain, uh, you know, the difference between law and legislation and why it's so important, okay, and why we're not going to get criminal accountability here domestically in Canada. And the only chance that we've got to force it to happen is to is to utilize, you know, what what powers we can access through the ICC, and that's a fact. So, you know, there's so many different things that have to be addressed, but we we can't do it all in one video, obviously, right? So, I just wanted to take this time. This is our first uh, our first attempt at going live surrounding this uh, this event, and we will be going live more, and it's going to be done more organized. This was kind of a last minute throw it together kind of thing, but um, we will be organized um, going forward much more. So. Um, I think we should end on that note, guys. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's end on that note. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and we'll let you know ahead of time. Um, maybe we'll schedule a specific time per day to to uh, to go live and discuss these things and bring in other people from other organizations that are going to be in attendance across the board. And uh, and we'll work out a proper schedule that way. Lamont's amazing when it comes to that stuff. So uh, I don't think there's anybody in our entire network that is uh, that that. Uh, yeah, get out of here. Well, get well, look out of here. Look at he is. You know what I mean? He's the best person for this stuff. I'm going to a show. I have to. You know, I mean, once in a while, I got to sparking up. I mean, you know, I know Dave looks a lot more like he's the one working hard. You know, I'm just the pretty boy. He just comes out there. Honestly, he doesn't do much. I love Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. We're, we're on for Sunday, yes? Hey, everybody out there, if you're in the South Etobicoke area on Sunday, come join Dave and I and the crew. We go, we go down to Southside Johnny's and uh, we play some real music with some real live bands and it's a lot of fun.